Hey everyone! Today's video is going to be pretty laid back. I've been itching to design some dragons lately after working on several commissions with some delicious character designs. So we're just going to watch me drawing and chat about my thought process until I don't feel like doing it anymore. With Art Fight right around the corner, now's the perfect time to make some new OCs. Anyways, this first one is Minnow. She's a sea wing mud wing hybrid, which means she has all the junk, and she's a field medic. I originally meant to go with more blue in her design, but I ended up really liking that greener aquamarine shade, and the cream and brown accents fit in pretty nicely. With her markings too, I was trying to do something a little different than usual. Character design isn't exactly my strong suit, I tend to stick too close to the regular scale patterns and stuff. I'm trying to use the bases I'm doing as a way to get better at design though, so we'll see. Minnow grew up near the Diamond Spray Delta, in one of a few small villages that have popped up over the years in that area. Mudwing sea wing hybrids actually aren't uncommon. It's almost become a subregion between the two kingdoms, and the dragons who live there are unique. The sea wings swim regularly, but don't stay underwater all the time. The mudwings are broken out of their sibling clutches, for a multitude of reasons, and there are plenty of hybrids running around. A new culture is starting to form in the area, although to Minnow, it's just home, how it's always been, because that's where she hatched. She went to Possibility when she was seven to apprentice to a healer, since she was interested and their village didn't really have one. Her dad Trax took her, and after spending a few years in Possibility, they returned to their village, where she's been ever since. I enjoy doing a flying pose for this piece, but I think for the rest I'm going to do regular reference sheet type spreads, because I don't get to do that very often, and I like how clean they look. Next up, we have Jazz. I ended up really liking his design. Jazz is definitely my favorite that I did. Same as with Minnow, at first I was going to have a totally different color palette, but by the end I had settled on this one. Never thought I'd be able to make red, green, and purple work this well in a design, but there's a first time for everything. In real time, I did this design like three days after Minnow, and I think it went easier because I didn't put in any of the scale patterns. He's a rainwing sandwing hybrid, so I did spines that faded into a rough on his neck and back, but other than that, I didn't do much line detail. This freed me up to do whatever I wanted without staying in the lines. I didn't even mark the underbelly or anything. So by my second design in this process, I think I've learned that the easiest way to get more unique markings is to have very minimalist line art. I tend to like pretty line art, so I think I need to focus more on trusting the process, because this piece sure turned out good. It let me think more about the colors and shapes, and less about tribes and stuff. But enough about the learning process, let's talk about Jazz. He's a musician living in the Scorpion Den. After the war, with the discovery of the tunnels and the gradual mingling of tribes, a lot of rainwing sandwing hybrids started popping up in that area, and Jazz was one of them. Sandwings are a pretty heavily musical culture, and Jazz took to it like a fish to water. These days, he's in high demand for festivals, bars, and private parties. Although in the post-war era, the stigma against hybrids has started to fade as they grow more and more common, many still struggle with their heritage. However, this has never been an issue for Jazz. He loves his colorful scales and the famous reputation he's earned with them. He's different from every single dragon in the den, and he loves that. Jazz is pretty easygoing. He's a party dragon, the type that knows someone everywhere he goes. He talks easily and has a knack for getting to know people. Not many dragons know Jazz himself, at least not very well. He has a strong relationship with his sandwing father, Kiln, and he has a few close friends. However, for the most part, the dragon is content to live a loud, musical life drifting from one part of the den to another. Also, I shaped his legs like bell bottoms, because nobody stopped me. I found this cute little snake picture while I was googling something and I snagged it for character ref because I love the pattern, and I used it to make Jasper. Named after a semi-precious stone, she's a hivewing silkwing. When she was hatched, there was no hiding Jasper's hivewing father. Instead of silkwing wing buds, she had tiny, soft hivewing wings. She also had a tiny venomous hivewing stinger. Hive silk hybrids being the ultimate social taboo, her and her mother became outcasts. When Jasper was five years old, her mother couldn't handle the social treatment anymore, and she managed to be transferred to a different hive, leaving her dragonette behind to fend for herself. With her stinger and wings, Jasper can't blend in among silk wings, but thanks to her too vivid coloring, she's unable to fend with hive wings either. And although she isn't the only hybrid in existence, it's rare, and Jasper finds herself left to her own devices most of the time. Of course, it doesn't help that she can be a lot to take in sometimes. Jasper's not insane, exactly, but sometimes she tears on the brink of it. She has a lot of maniac energy and no good ways to expend it. Anyways, you can definitely see how I tried to stick to the snake design with this. I gave her slitted eyes too, to kind of stick to the theme, but I also gave her heart markings in three or four places, because I thought it was kind of a neat balance to it. 
I almost went for a rainwing highwing hybrid, but I decided to do silkwing instead for the tiny horns where the antenna would go. But I knew I wanted something outside of typical highwing colors, so I ended up going with silkwing. It took me a while to settle on what colors I wanted. I kind of knew what I was going for, but I think out of all of them she was the hardest to pin down the palette for. I knew I wanted something with darker pinks and whites, but it was difficult to find the right hue. I'm happy with how it turned out though. When I design characters, I found I start with a neat color palette or pattern or animal that I like, kind of like the snake I use for Jasper, and then go from there. As I do the sketch and stuff, I start playing with features and the ways to make the design unique. I also begin feeling out the colors I'm looking for, more specifically. Then I'll do my lines, which is a pretty quick process when you don't add too much scale detail. Once the lines are done, the real work starts, filling in the colors and fine-tuning my shades and whatnot. You might have noticed all the character art I did this video was unshaded, and that's so it doesn't block any colors. But yeah, by the time I'm working on my colors, I'm noticing things about the design that give me the story. Like for instance, with Jasper, I was coloring the line art on her wings, and I wondered if when she was hatched, would she have wing buds or tiny versions of adult wings. And one thing led to another, and I was kind of imagining her backstory while I drew her. I think it'd be neat to hear about other people's creative process with their OCs. I can work from the writing to the art or backwards where I start with the drawing and fill in the story from there. Feel free to let me know in the comments. Anyways, this was a fun little side project to work on. Hopefully I've got my design wiggles out at least for a little while so I can focus on the rest of my ideas. These designs are up in my art fight and I do intend to participate again this year, so I look forward to seeing y'all on the battlefield. Remember to check out the links in the description and subscribe if you enjoy this video. Thanks so much for watching and please have a wonderful week.